dead wife locked in a freezer for four years. Woman beaten to death by cross-dressing fiancé. Officer, there's an unknown woman who's been shot in my driveway. Welcome to Team Phoenix Crime Time. Hello, welcome to Crime Time. Okay, so this guy, Larry Dinwiddie, 57, from Missouri, he was charged last week in the death of his wife, Cynthia. She was 56, after they found her body inside a locked storage unit. They think he had stored her body inside a locked freezer inside the storage unit for possibly up to four years. The freezer was switched on and padlocked. Last Monday, employees at the storage unit in Marshfield, McFadden Storage, discovered human remains. The freezer had been stored at their facility for more than six months, and it is understood that he fell behind on rental fees. Cynthia had likely been locked in the freezer, they think, since around 2015. The body was stored beside food items. When authorities couldn't locate Larry, they concocted a ruse to get him to come to the storage unit. They told him that the freezer quit working and he needed to hurry up and get back there to pick it up. He was arrested last Tuesday at the facility uh, when he confessed to killing his wife at a different location in an apparent domestic violence situation. He was telling people that she had left him. He told investigators that he killed his wife four years prior by hitting her in the head with a hammer and strangling her. He allegedly said that he put the body in his freezer because he basically didn't know what else to do. He said that the fatal encounter happened at his home in Marshfield when his wife threw a hammer at him during an argument. That's how it started. He said he kept the body in the freezer since killing his wife. And he even solicited the help of friends to move the freezer to the storage unit without obviously telling them what was inside. He's currently being held in the Webster County Jail and does not have an attorney listed. He faces a potential life sentence if convicted. He's got little criminal history other than a drug conviction going right back to 1982. He was charged with second degree murder, abandonment of a corpse and armed criminal action. He's jailed on a £1 million bond. As I say, a conviction could bring a sentence of life in prison. Let's hope that is the case. The next case is a very sad case from the UK, London. Roderick Deakin White, 38, has been sentenced to 17 years in prison for the horrendous and savage murder of his fiancée Amy Parsons, 35. Roderick beat his fiancée to death with a metal bar while she was showering at the flat they shared in Whitechapel, East London, after she said she was leaving him because of his cross-dressing habits. Amy, originally from Australia, was left bleeding to death after suffering horrific head, facial and brain injuries in the attack on the 25th of April. Deakin White was found guilty of her murder by a jury on Tuesday, November 19th. He told jurors that he became angry and jealous after Amy began a relationship with a colleague a few weeks before the murder. In interviews with police, he admitted attacking Miss Parsons with a metal bar, but denied murder, claiming it was an accident. He fled the flat before confessing to a friend who persuaded him to hand himself in. During the trial, the court heard how Amy, a personal assistant, had become increasingly unhappy with her relationship, particularly due to Deacon White's cross-dressing habits. She was unhappy about this, and this was something that he had often wanted to do when they were being intimate. The jury found him guilty of murder. He was sentenced to a minimum of 17 years in prison, reduced by the 210 days that he has already served in custody. Judge John Lafferty, while sentencing, said that he killed Ms. Parsons in a most horrendous, savage and brutal way. I quote, your view is that if you can't have her, no one can have her, and you killed her. 
There is no sentence I can pass upon you today that will bring back Miss Parsons, a young, successful, vivacious and kind-hearted young woman whose life was brutally taken by you. Amy's sister Eve spoke of her family's grief in a victim impact statement. She described Amy as the bright light of the family and a beautiful person. Nothing could have prepared me to deal with this loss. All of our family are as heartbroken as it is possible to be. Speaking after the sentencing, the sister said that her family was disappointed by the length of the jail term and will be lodging an appeal, adding 17 years does not do her justice. I wondered what do you think? Next, we have a bit of a strange one. This is Yvonne Serrano, 51, from Florida. She's been arrested in connection with a deadly shooting that happened last Saturday following a group outing for a movie and drinks. Yvonne Serrano, 51, allegedly shot and killed the victim identified as Daniela Tabares Maya, 21, of Coral Springs, early Saturday morning after the woman had driven her home after they had been out with other friends from the gym. Later that morning, Yvonne called 911 to report the body of an unknown gunshot victim in her driveway. When officers arrived, they saw Daniela partially inside the driver's side door of a Nissan that was parked in the centre of the driveway. The driver's side door was open and Daniela's right foot was still inside the SUV as she lay on her back in the driveway with a gunshot wound to her forehead. Daniela was pronounced dead at the scene. Yvonne reportedly told investigators that she did not know the victim, but then later on she said that she did. She had gone to see a movie Friday night with Daniela and others from their gym, adding that the group then walked down the road to a bar. After several hours at the bar, Daniela drove Yvonne home, and surveillance video shows them pull into the driveway, Yvonne's driveway, at 2am on Saturday morning. Yvonne then called 911 at 5.55am, Allegedly, before she called, she deleted ring camera footage, washed her clothes. Yvonne also told police that she had blacked out and couldn't remember how she got home. Police spent most of Saturday collecting evidence in the neighbourhood. After obtaining search warrants, police reportedly found a handgun inside Yvonne's home and said that it matched the shell casing found inside Daniela's car. Both the gun and the holster also had blood on them. Yvonne was charged with second degree murder and tampering with physical evidence. Allegedly, both of them saw the movie 21 Bridges around 7.30pm the night before, but apparently did not sit together. Yvonne allegedly told police that she and Maya were part of a large group of friends who all attend the same gym in Coral Springs, and that the, the, sorry, the gathering for drinks and a movie was planned several days before. After the movie, the group went to a World of Beer pub and surveillance video from that night shows them together between 9.45 Friday and 1.25 a.m. Saturday, where they were conversing, laughing and drinking for several hours. They were then seen on the footage leaving the bar together. As I said before, surveillance video footage saw them arrive back at Yvonne's house at about 2 a.m., the headlights turned off five minutes later. Yvonne initially told police that she happened upon Daniela's body when she left her home to go to the gym and dialed 911 immediately. But she was not dressed in gym clothes when police arrived. The medical examiner determined that Yvonne, sorry, I beg your pardon, Maya died from a single gunshot wound to the head and there was no exit wound. Yvonne then told police that she had blacked out at the World of Beer pub and had no recollection of how she got home and that she woke up in her own bed. The trainer at the gym the woman attended provided a sworn statement to police that he had first-hand knowledge that Daniela Meyer drove Yvonne home after they left the bar. When investigators questioned Yvonne about a damp tank top in her laundry room, she allegedly stated that she had washed the tank top early that morning and stated that she was wearing it that night. Later on, when she was being questioned at the police department, she changed her story, stating that she actually woke up in the passenger side 
of Daniela's car at 5.55 a.m. and saw Daniela lying on the driveway. Yvonne then stated that she had a concealed weapons permit and owned three guns, one of which a 9mm pistol she carries around with her. She added that she removed the pistol from her purse and placed it in her master bedroom while still in the holder after calling 911 and checking Daniela's vital signs. She then said that she changed out of the white tank top she was wearing and placed it in the washing machine because it had blood on it. Yvonne allegedly told police that she was initially going to take an Uber home but that Daniela volunteered to drive her. She also stated that she went on to the Ring doorbell app on her phone and deleted all the files. Her pistol tested positive for human blood on the holster and the shell casings located inside Daniela's car were consistent with Yvonne's gun. She was charged with tampering or fabricating physical evidence and second degree murder. She is currently being housed at the Broward County Jail without bond. She has not yet appeared in court and it is unclear if she has retained an attorney. But I think going by that, she looks pretty much guilty. Thank you for listening to Crime Time. I hope to bring you some different cases each week. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please like, please subscribe and please hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content.